Hey, what's up? Aurelius here, talking about a chilly topic and one of sci-fi's favorite subjects, freezing humans. But what is it all about and is it even possible? Some terms always reoccur in sci-fi movies and video games when it comes to life extension and long-distance travel. Cryonics, cryogenics and cryosleep. Often those words are being mixed up. Cryogenics is the study of materials and elements at very low temperatures, generally defined as below minus 50 degrees Celsius, which is the upper limit for cryogenics. Cryonics, on the other hand, is the belief that it is possible to preserve human life by freezing and resurrecting at a later point in time. Cryonics usually deal with temperatures at minus 196 degrees Celsius since it is the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. Immersing the human body in liquid nitrogen is considered a practical way to freeze it for preservation. Lastly, cryosleep only requires a slight reduction of body temperature by about 5 degrees Celsius. The body is put into an ultra-slow metabolic state called torpor. It is currently being researched by NASA for future Mars missions in the form of a cryosleep chamber. However, this won't stop aging and primarily serves to reduce resource consumption. While cryosleep can technically be done, cryonics is a whole different story. Here's the catch. Human organs, including the brain, are not designed to survive low temperatures. Most of the human organs contain over 70% water, which expands at very low temperatures, allowing for ice crystals to form. This process is damaging to the human organs and tissue. Wanna try it out? Put a strawberry in the freezer and see what happens. Back in 2017, I developed software in a project for organ transplantation here in Germany and what I learned is that there is no way to preserve human organs for a longer period of time. Yes, you can cool them down a little bit for transportation after you extract them from a dead body, but we're talking 30 hours maximum for kidneys or 6 hours for the heart and lungs. In nature, there are animals that hibernate in icy temperatures. The Canadian wood frog, for example, freezes itself during winter and thaws in spring. The wood frog is capable of forming cryoprotectant molecules inside its body to prevent osmotic shrinkage of cells, which would lead to the formation of ice crystals. It would be necessary to inject a concentrated dose of cryoprotectants into the human body to replicate this effect. And if this cocktail doesn't kill you, the process of freezing will. This is why cryonics is only performed on persons declared legally dead. Not brain dead, because we want to freeze the brain before it suffers damage from oxygen starvation. As of today, there has been no demonstration of a successful cryonic process yet. There are non-profit organizations experimenting and pushing the limit of cryopreservation. Well, don't hold your breath though. If you are considering to perform cryonics with today's state of the art, you can spend $10,000 up to $200,000 depending on the institute and the parts of your body you want to freeze. I wouldn't really recommend it yet. Let's just say for a moment that it is possible to successfully undergo a cryonic procedure. What else could go wrong? First of all, how much are you willing to sacrifice? It is entirely possible that you will have to sacrifice your memories. Proteins in the brain could be affected by the cryonic procedure. Worst case, you wake up with terrible amnesia. Would you be willing to accept a new host body, assuming the body doesn't reject its new brain? Altered carbon deals with a lot of philosophical questions about transferring consciousness in a different host body, or sleeve as they call it. Great show, you should see it. If cryonics is reserved only for the richest, you'd wake up in a world where most of your friends and close relatives have long been gone. You would have to adapt to a futuristic, maybe dystopian world. Then again, maybe that's what you want. What about cryosleep? Sure, it's great not to get bored to death or empty the food reserves on your way to Mars, but in a torpor state, you might just end up dreaming like coma patients do. 
At least I don't want to be trapped in the nightmare for years. Maybe uploading the mind would be an alternative. What do you think? Tell us in the comments. Here's some fun material to watch if you like to play with the idea of cryonics. Real Life is a well-directed psychological drama showing what it means to become a lab rat after being cryonized. Demolition Man is an entertaining 90s action flick with the concept of a cryo prison for criminals. The Three Seashells Man, The Three Seashells. And pretty much every Deep Space movie. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button. Here's a music video about cryonics I did with Darkest Horizon. Check out their YouTube channel. And if you're interested in all sorts of nerdy stuff, keep following my channel by subscribing. Aurelius, signing out.